um, do logos and websites for, for small businesses. And that's what I like to do, but there was a point where it got real slow, and so I had a lot of time on my hands, so I started painting and drawing and illustrating again. You know, and that wasn't necessarily building websites and doing logos. Okay, now I have this body of work that I, I'm really enjoying right now because my time is slow. How do I sell this? How do I get rid of this? I can't take, you know, my, my illustrations and put it on my, my website that, you know, I'm, that I'm trying to appeal to small businesses to because they don't know how it relates. You know, if all they see is urban, urban illustrations and urban paintings, then they may figure that I may not be the right guy to do their website or their logo. You know what I mean? Because a lot of non-artists don't understand that, okay, just because I do this, do this doesn't mean I can't do your logo or your website. And so that's why, that's the primary reason why I had to separate my brand. And, and you know, so you have to understand um, where your clients are coming from and what they're asking for. And if you like to do both, do both. If you like to do one thing and not the other, just do that one thing and concentrate on, on that one thing. You know, you have to figure out what you like to do for yourself and what works best best for you. You have to also think about what are your strengths. Yes. So you can't just take every job that's out there and create a brand, a new brand, just because there's a certain kind of job that is getting uh, a lot of more business than your style. And uh, because once you try that other style, that's not your strength. You're not going to produce good work. You're not going to do it on time. You're going to start giving yourself a bad name instead of um, um, the, the benefits of doing that work. So sometimes, yeah, you have to go with your strengths. What part is it that you're good at? What is it that you do? And, uh, and can you do it professionally all the way? There's a saying um, that I read a long time ago, and I never get it out of my head. It says... Um, Amateurs do it till they get it right. Professionals do it till they can't get it wrong. So you got to stick with your strengths and then do it all the way right. Right. All right. Um, any more questions? Anybody got any, any ideas or, or? Yes. Mm hmm. You know, just to kind of figure out Right. So what, repeat the question, say the question, and um, get the answer. Basically, in a nutshell, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, you, have, you don't have a website, you just have a, a Facebook profile. You have a personal profile, and at first, you were, all of your, your hair clients were on your personal profile. Well, not the clients, but to get to hmm. people to stop paying attention that I do hair. Right. So you had two different things going on on the same page, and then you split it up, so now you have separate pages for different things, right? So you have a page for your hair, and you have a page for your art. Oh. So you got three things going on. Good. Uh-huh. The hair and the art. Okay. If, if you're getting clients and you're getting clients to, to come to you and pay pay you to do their hair, then you may not necessarily need a website. And I, I tell people you need to have at least one online um, entity. You know, if you don't have a website. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, your, your clients who, who may come to you to get their hair done, they may or may not be the same people that would purchase your art. I would still separate it. There may be some, some crossover. Um, there may be people that, that love your art, you know, when, you know, and, and know and 
originally know you from um, being a cosmetologist, but if you're finding that more and more people are coming from your art, then yeah, I would, I would separate. Let me and, and you're oh. going to still have some, you can do some cross promotion, you know, on your uh, art page. You can also let people know that you do hair, but let them know, or if you want your hair done, then this is my, my page for that. Contact me here on, on this page. I'm going to add to that. Uh -huh. But uh, you raise your hand over there. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, um, this is what I propose. I, and then just based on my experience. All right, so I, I uh, learned to do tattoos back in 1995. I um, got hardcore into the graphics in, uh, by 98, 97, 98. Uh, started building websites by 99. Um, I, um, I got really a good hold of uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, um, probably uh, 01, 02. And so, um, so I do tattoos, I do web design, I do illustrations, I do uh, design for print. Um, I also manage and produce a, a monthly newsletter, a paper, it's a paper newsletter uh, for a neighborhood. I have a different website for each one of those things. I have a different uh, Facebook page for each one of those things. I have uh, several different uh, Twitters uh, for each for a couple of those things. I don't mix any of the stuff together. I do have a couple of websites where it's all about me and it has a links to all of those different websites of the work that I do. I found I find that uh, a website is necessary. You have to have a website. And the more stuff that you have online, the better. Uh, but you have to also, uh, but, you, but not just having it, it has to be well managed. You have to make sure you understand and, and, uh, and are clear about the information that you're putting out there. And I say the more that you have is the better is because as soon as you hand your card out to somebody, and what is it that first thing you do if I handed you my card is to look it up. And sometimes you don't even, won't even go to the website that is listed on the card. You're just going to say, well, what's this guy's name and what comes up on Google? And if the only thing you have is Facebook, then um, your ranking may come up high. Maybe it don't, depending on how many other people have that same name. But if you have several uh, online presences, including Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, maybe Tumblr, Posters, Blogger, WordPress, there's a lot of free stuff out there including your personal website. Uh, and as an artist, a creative person who's always posting, I have a deviant art also, um, I ha I'm posting all the time under my name, under my different, uh, under tattoo name, under the illustration name, under the web design name. Eventually, when you look, up, look me up, and if you look up the creative genius on Google, the whole first page of, of, of images that come up is me. The whole first page on the search results is the only person is me because nobody else is using that name. So I branded myself, I branded the work that I do, uh, but they also have their own, their own destination. So if I'm talking to somebody who wants a uh, website and they're uh, real um, uptight about their style, about who they work with, I do not want to talk to them about tattoos. Some people still have uh, um, their own um, misconceptions about other things and that they're not, they don't relate to. So I want to keep that separate. If I want to, if I want to sell somebody my art and a painting, um, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, dilute my message about the paintings that I do by telling them about other things that I do at the same time. So I'm gonna have a website that's dedicated just to my art and my paintings. I'm gonna have a website that's dedicated just to the illustrations. I want them to pay me for my illustrations and hire me as an illustrator. So I'm not gonna bother them with anything else that's on there or that that has that uh, that I do but that's not related to what they want to find out about me or find out about the work that I do. Yes, so go ahead. So how do you manage all these, all these online presences? How do you do that? And hold on, uh, um, I, um, a flavor day. You have to have, well, yeah, you can hire somebody. That, how do you manage all these things? Yes, you hire somebody if you have the money. Or you can get some interns. I've done that. There you go. And, uh, but really, what it comes down to is uh, I, I have, um, uh, my wife just brought me the, uh, my printouts that I was going to hand out. 
and in it I explain some of the most common uh, methods for marketing and branding yourself online for free. And if and uh, and there's a few methods that require very little of your time. You just have to do it consistently. And once you get started in doing it, you will realize that it's really not that hard. It's hard when you don't know what you're doing. But the more, more you do it, little by little, you put in one hour, two hours a week, time yourself and say, look, I'm not going to do nothing today, uh, uh, nothing on this computer beyond what I'm supposed to do and knock it out. And then leave it alone. And if you post once a week, then you post once a week. I know W, who, uh, who has ever heard of W, the artist? Awesome artist, gets paid big money to do a lot of things. He runs uh, the Art Beats and Lyrics series of art shows. He posts once a month. Dude is famous. He gets paid a lot of money for his art, paintings, illustrations, and he hardly posts. I, I post every day. I don't know, every day, post several times a day. I'm used to it. You don't have to be all the time, and it doesn't have to take up all your time. You just have to do it effectively. You have to do it in a way that it benefits you. You know, don't let it be your job. In that case, if you got that much work that needs to go into your online presence, then you need to hire somebody because... Um, uh, that's going to be a source of your money. But if it's not, and you're trying to do it as cheap as possible and free, then you need to just, uh, it becomes one, or more, one other thing that you have to learn how to do, including how to write contracts, how to submit, how to send in uh, um, um, invoices, and so on. It's part of being a full-time artist. Go ahead, so what you want to say? Basically, you can create a post, send it to Facebook, send it to Instagram, send it to Twitter. The Zen of Social Media and Marketing. It's a book and it uh, gives you a lot of uh, good tips. That's right, because I'm going to talk about the things that I do and the, the people are involved. And, uh, and if I'm the one talking about you, next time you look yourself up, you're going to see me. 
That's how I do my marketing. That's right. If you want to sell your artwork, I mean, marketing yourself is, is inevitable. I mean, it's what we don't like to do, but you, it's what's necessary if you want to sell your artwork. You know, so there's no way around it. Um, just schedule, you know, one or two hours a week, one or two hours a day, whatever works for you, but you have to do it. You know, I, I hate this term, get your name out there, but essentially that's what it's, what it's doing. You know, when, I, when people say that to me, I ask, get my name wet. You know, because you don't know. I know where I need to be. But, you know, I just, I just hate that term. But it's something that you have to do if you want to put your artwork in front of people who are going to buy your work. I think it's good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're an artist. You have to be creative. Like like, like him, I... I all day, every day. I post something and like, oh, I love the artwork. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. And this is, I put out a, a, a weekly newsletter every month with our stars. It's free. And a couple weeks ago, one of my newsletters it was entitled, um, It's All About the Image. I see a lot of artists posting their, their work on Facebook. But they don't have a title, they don't have a medium, and they don't have a price. And more importantly, they don't have a link to where somebody can go purchase it. Every piece of artwork that is finished, that you post on these social media sites, at a very minimum, put a link to where this person can go directly to it and buy it within two or three clicks, no more than three clicks. You know, just posting it, people are gonna say, oh, he, he's an artist, he likes to draw. You know, there's no prices, there's no link to where I can purchase it. So when they want something from you, when they call you, guess what? They're gonna ask you for something free. But if you post a price and a link with every piece of artwork that you post on Facebook, and that's what I use primarily, then people know not to call me if, if they're not planning on, on buying or I'm going to charge you for, for logo design or what have you. you know, and when we all see these, these things. Hey, I'm an artist, and you know, I, I can't tell you. If I would be rich if I had a nickel for every person that came to me and wanted some free artwork. You know, and I'm sure that a lot of Just people the say the same. I mean, we're all Okay, uh, repeat the question and then add oh, Okay, it. I'm sorry. One time. Well, since, since you don't have a website, how, how are you? Okay, you do have a website? You don't want to do marketing, you want, but you want to find uh, a place where you can sell it or somebody who can do those, the selling and the work for you. Okay. That's what I was going to suggest. Sites like Etsy, um, but all of those Zazzle. any any website that's out there that's uh, available for artists, you're still going to have to do the work. You still have to set it up. You still have to yeah. upload your images. You still have to put I mean, a price on it. Nobody's going to do it for you, and that's there's no magic pill for that. I'll do it for you, but it's going to charge. It's going to cost yeah. you. That's right. Exactly. And, uh, and that's fine. And there's going to be people out there and services out there that will do that for you. They're going to do the work for you. Just don't sign anything and pay them beforehand before you actually. You, you Google it. You have to get online. Yeah. You have to. You have to look up their uh, reputation and, and then type in the name of the company that wants your business and then, and then the word uh, complaints right next to that on the Google search yeah. and then hit enter and watch what comes up. And if it has a lot of complaints and people telling you stay away, then you stay away. That's well, that's the that's the the hardest biggest hurdle that, any that, artist has. That's another thing. Um, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm gonna get to that. How do you get into the galleries? But the, and I have a short answer for that. But I wanna get to you. If, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Probably, yeah. yeah so, yeah, I, so if you get rid of your personal page, will it delete your fan page? Sure. It, it will. But look, why go through all that? Just keep your personal page personal and keep your fan page the art that you do or, or the or the stuff that your fans want to know about. You don't have to delete them or uh, break them apart. Just keep it separate. Don't post personal stuff on your fan page. And mm -hmm. and and now uh, and and but you can post some of your uh, art and uh, or interests on your um personal page and there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. and keep your personal page keep your personal page uh, private so then only those who you're given access to can see the stuff that you post there there you go that's a way to do that I mean there's all, all kinds of ways pretty much yeah. everything that you social media network that you get there's get into, settings they have settings. yes and so you can kind of tailor it to you know your needs and, and how you want to you know be exposed Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you're controversial and you say crazy things and you don't want them to see the kind of crazy person that you are. <laughs> Got it. Let me go back to uh, the gallery thing. I think that's a subject for another um, uh, uh, Black Book conversation. And what we're going to do is probably find a couple artists who are in the galleries. And I know one. Um, First hand, Fahamu. This yeah. dude is about to do an exhibit in New York right now. He has a gallery that, that uh, represents him in New York and in Europe. Yeah. How does he do it? I don't know. I've known this guy for uh, 15 years. Awesome painter. He can paint. He is great. He is awesome. And all his paintings have a social message. And they're nothing that, none of those paintings are you going to agree with everything he has to say. Uh, but he has an agent and he has people um, doing the work for him. And 99.9% and .9 of his paintings include him in. Yes, They're right. They're all self portraits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, all of them. Do y'all recommend or how do you go about finding like maybe an art agent? Like I know they've got agents for uh, artists that they want to work with. Mm -hmm. How do you find an art agent that says, hey, I can have you do this? Google it. I don't have any experience. I've, I've done research. Um, you know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's easy what they do because it, it's all about their network, who they know. Um, but, you know, if you feel like you need an agent to, to do that type of work, then, yeah, there's, there's agents here in, in Atlanta. Um, go find some of these uh, artists who are doing well. A lot of these artists have, have agents. Just, just ask. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I think that's a good idea to have an agent, uh, but yeah, you have to be careful who you find and what they have to offer, and uh, I'm kind of uh, trustworthy. I don't trust everything. I'm kind of cynical about it, and uh, and they have to be like he, like Levy just said. It's about about their connections and what their and what their and their worth is based on the connections and the work that they've done before. And I am not going to sign with anybody who just has a bright idea that they can get rich off of my art. I want to sign with somebody who's already has a track record and has been doing it for a long time, and they have other artists that they've made rich. And I say, all right, cool, let's do it. What do I got to do? And those are hard to come across. And uh, and I'm sure that they have hundreds of portfolios that get sent into them to review so that they could uh, represent somebody. But it's possible. I think what we're trying to cover here with the Black Book Conversations is how, what is it that you can do yourself to give you the edge that you need. Uh, to profit and make money off your art. And um, unless you have the money already uh, to pay an, uh, somebody to do your social media for you, then you're going to have to do it for yourself. Boy. And it's not hard. And all, all these people are going to charge you. Like, like a gallery, a lot of artists have migrated away from the galleries because a lot of galleries are taking up 50% of your work. So and your if you money. have a painting for $1,200, are you going to get a six? Because they're going to get that, that other $600. And on top of that, they're not going to tell you who purchased your painting. And so that's how they keep themselves in the middle as the middleman, as the contact to that collector who wants to come back and purchase another painting from you. You have no idea who's buying your work. And you're only getting 50% of its value. So, you know, the Internet and all the social media has leveled the playing field for a lot of us. And we need to learn how to use it to our advantage. 
yeah, it's going to take some work, but I'd rather put a little work in every week rather than have somebody uh, taking 50% out of, out of my, my potential profits. You know, and it doesn't take much with all this social media and some of the tools that you can use to, to post to several things at the same time and, and kind of leverage um, the network that you do have. And there's nothing wrong with being in, in galleries. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's, that's fine. But a lot of uh, artists are, are moving away from that, but some are still there and some are doing both. You know, it, it's what works for you. Um, anything else? Uh, yes. If, if you have that problem, then it sounds as if you're spending more time on your personal page than your... Actually, I don't spend time on any of the pages. I need to. <laughs> I'm trying to learn how to do that. I'm not right. very good at it. But, so, mm -hmm. uh, like I'm telling you, the group of artists that I work with, sometimes I want to tell people, like some people on the personal page are interested. Mm -hmm. But how do I let, how do I tell them that they need to go over here to this other page to check out the artist, but it's a personal page? Tell them, it, it, tell them to go to that page. You know, let them know that you are the owner and that, that I create artwork and this is my, if you're interested in my art or if you're looking to buy some art, um, here's my, my fan page for my art. Just, just tell them. But how do you even introduce them to the person? Without, it, without it appearing like this is your page that you're selling yourself. You can't be afraid to sell. No, 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 I know. But so, I thought you were supposed to, based on what I, I thought I heard, maybe I misheard that you keep it all separate. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so we said keep your uh, have a fan page where you post your artwork and the, and the things you want people to pay you for it. But then keep your personal page, or whatever you want to do. But just make sure you drive people to the fan page to do conduct business. And it's always okay to even post your the business stuff on your personal page. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what you don't want is a person who's looking for you for business see that you don't post something that, that has nothing to do with your business on your on your business page on your fan page because then that diverts the the, the uh, their attention and uh, and it takes away from the message that you're trying to sell something you know so you so it's okay to post things on your personal page but don't but keep your business page business keep your fan page about the what it is that people come and see. You know, and, and, and how do you try to sell without being um, all in their face and being overly advertising? It's by just posting something and then have the links, have the information. You know, uh, yeah, I knitted this, uh, hanging out with my friends. Mm, check it out. You want to buy it? Here's my Etsy link. Bam. Make it simple. You know, what you don't want to say is, hey, I'm broke today. I need to pay a bill. Can y'all buy this? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it's... it's 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 a real story, but that is not that is not gonna um you know that does not instill confidence in the person and, and that's doing the selling you know or the, who, who who wants to buy from you you know it's like eh I'm annoyed by this move on. On your business page, right? Yeah, yeah, but you can always you know on your personal page you should post post stuff. I, 
I, everything that has, that has to do with the black book conversation and everything else that I'm doing, it's all my personal stuff. Oh, yeah, but I, um, uh, but I still also keep updates on the other pages related to that own specific subject. Oh, I have my personal page. So go ahead, brother. Yeah, you, you don't have to push it down their throat. Just let them know it's available, mm -hmm. that it's for sale, and that you're just not doodling, showing a picture because you like to draw. Let them know I'm an artist. Putting that price and the link to where they can purchase it lets them know that you are an artist and you sell your artwork, you know, without saying it. That's, that's what's said for you. Yes, sir. And, and uh, okay, so a gallery has uh, their own uh, um, parameters on what they accept, what they do not accept, you know. But it's, it's so, so that means that you're still going to have to keep rolling through the galleries to find the one that fits. And I think uh, the easiest way to find the one that fits your your style is to see the styles that they carry, and find a gallery that carries the stuff that you like. And. and and, uh, and that may be true, and that may be true, and that's why you start, that's why you market yourself online hard, and, that, and, you, and you join group art shows. And yes, why not? Yes, all of that is good. I, I talk about yourself, talk about your art, talk about what moves you. I, we've been doing a series of uh, artist um, interviews uh, on video with mono art shows. And, uh, and yes, we do a art, group art show where we have a party, and we have artwork, and people hang out and drink, and and get to meet each other and so on, and, and sometimes we sell art. Uh, but one of the things that, I, that we've been doing is doing the interviews for, with, of artists and we post them on the website. Because uh, maybe here we all uh, can draw and we all know how to do something creative that, that, uh, that uh, other people uh, look at us and say, how'd you do that? Um, but there's a world at large not only admires you for your work, they want to know who you are. And then it may also help move some of your art or some of the business that you're producing. So that's what we do the artist interviews. So say, hey, tell me about you. Tell me why, how you got going, and uh, and what is it that why is it that you do it? And uh, so yes, that's all part of marketing. If you could put a commercial during the Super Bowl uh, to tell them about your art, then you would do it. But since we cannot afford it at this moment, unless uh, you're rich and you need to tell me you're rich, so I got some sales stuff, uh, then then you do YouTube. Yes, why not? Do all the other services that are out there. Going back to, to posting your images on Facebook, another thing that you should do is if you have a create a, an interesting story behind a particular piece or the inspiration behind it, it's never a bad idea to, to write that out along with the description of your artwork. Because like you said, um, people not, may not necessarily uh, feel that passionate about your artwork. They may be more, more into you. But if you have a story behind that piece, that they can relate to, that may make them more inclined to connect with you and connect with your artwork and maybe to make a, a purchase. So, you know, if you have an interesting story or, or, or something, people love inspirational stories. All good good brands have some kind of story behind it, whether or not you're, you're Dave Thomas or, or I, I don't know, uh, somebody, you know, but all good brands have a story that people, that appeals to the public. Sure, don't. 
Thank they sure don't. I posted, a, I posted a link to this thing here today, and somebody said, where's the link? And I said, it's not right there in the post. Yeah. Right. A lot of times, I don't even respond. They don't read. Sometimes people don't read. So, yeah, you can try different ways. There's a, let's go with back there, and then her, and then you. Go ahead. Nice, it? it would be nice if there was a catalog that said this guy's rich and he got he buying artwork. That'd be real nice. Somebody said there is a site. What's the site? That's the job of. Part of the job of, of the gallery, though, that, that's part of the job of the gallery is to market your artwork, not just to hang your, your stuff on their wall, but to actively market you. Now, if they have 50 artists that they're that they're representing, as opposed to another gallery that may have 10, that art that gallery that may have only 10 artists, you may have more of a chance to sell your work. So you just have to find that. that but gallery. it's already a hard chance to even get into the gallery. Exactly. So. Uptight wine and cheese. It's like you come in there and it's just like you feel the art, you feel the people, mm -hmm. and people come into you. It's just that's it's completely. Like, I, I think that's a direct result of, of the the information age, the internet. People getting together and being able to to no, post their not, own show. It's not a party that we had. People coming in there to buy the art. They buy. Uh, they get to know the artist in the setting that is outside of the gallery. Right. Right, and that's your opportunity to get in there and schmooze and network and talk with. Well, if, if you feel that way, then understand that a gallery is not for you, may not be for you. If you don't want to go through the headache and the hassle to do that, then, then focus. Yeah, and that's what we're all looking for. Yes, sir. Any other resources that people are talking about today? If you can post them on the event page on Facebook. All right, so that way we can all access them. Yeah, that'd be awesome.
post it on uh, on the page of uh, yeah. on Facebook so that I can grab all that stuff and put it on the website. We also have a page on the website tbbcatl.com and it has a uh, page of resources. So everything that I come across that is an opportunity for artists including submitting artwork to galleries, to festivals and events and so on, I put it up there and, uh, and you need to check it out. It's, uh, if you send me stuff, I will put it up and, uh, and uh, keep it updated. What you want to say back there? Our papers. And look, you gotta submit everywhere and anywhere. That's why you gotta use the social media to help you. All right, because on Facebook, I found out that um, one of the magazines that I love to pay for, that I love to look at but not pay for, is called Imagine FX. It's for artists. It's awesome art. And they uh, on their Facebook page, they, they put a post saying uh, they're looking for uh, um, drawing sessions to submit their artwork and some of the pictures of their drawing sessions. So I had just came from a drawing session that, the night before, and I had a bunch of pictures. So I submitted. Um, the, the, the lady the, the, in charge of the, the submitting those articles, uh, she hit me back on email and said, uh, we like what you're doing, what they're doing there. Can you send me more pictures? I need high-res pictures of the artwork that was done that night. I said, cool. I went back to the gallery. This was at ABB Gallery. I took pictures of the artwork that was produced that night because they had it up on the wall. And, uh, and I grabbed unedited pictures that I had taken with my iPhone and I submitted a whole thing to them. All right, they're in, the, in, in England. Um, a, a week or so later, she said, okay, it's gonna hit, your stuff is gonna be in the July issue. And I, I was like, for real, I, I, I didn't really think about it. And then uh, I pick up the July issue and there are two of my drawings in the magazine. Said, yeah, I got a little corner of the, mag of the page, but so what, it's Virginia. there. There. But I had to pay attention to what's going on in social media to know the opportunity was there. Mm -hmm. or, or pay $25 every month to have a subscription to that magazine so I can see that they was asking for submissions. In, in, Imagine FX. Imagine FX. Uh-huh, FX. The letter F, the letter X. And, and if you're on social media, and in particularly Facebook, if you're spending more time on your own page, you're, you're wrong. I mean, you need to go to, to collectors' pages, pages of other artists. That's how I found out when I first moved here um, to Atlanta. It was really it was before Facebook, but I really didn't start exhibiting work until I met this guy because this guy would post everything that he was doing. So, you know, I went to that person's page or that exhibitor's page and asked, well, how can I exhibit? You know, and that's, that's the, the whole thing. I mean, if I'm on my own page all day, mm -hmm. then I'm not finding out about the opportunities that are that are going down. And a lot of people won't post it, but a lot of people say, hey, I'll be at this show in November. And the name of the show, I'll go Google the name of the show, find out who the contact information is, and ask. You know, I don't don't necessarily have to ask the artist. If I know them, I will. But, you know, that and use that to your advantage. Go ahead, brother. That's that's you know, you know that's that's finding your target market. If you like to paint sailboats, then go to the pages owned by people who, who like sailboats. <laughs> I'm sure there's a Facebook page for, for people who like to get on their yacht mm -hmm. in, in Miami or the coast of California. Go to those pages and let them know, hey, I'm an artist. Go to the moderator, ask them for permission. It's always good to do that. And ask, hey, I paint sailboats, that's all I paint. Do you mind if every now and then I post a picture on your page, and there may be nothing but sailboats, and you may be the only artist on that page. Like Dan, he's come here to Hypopotamus, and he was the only artist in here, and he's gotten jobs out of here because he was the only artist out of here. Out here, there's a lot of guys who are in, who are in here developing apps, websites, coding, 
this, that, and other, and eventually they're going to have to contact an artist. So he put himself in a position to where he's exposed himself. He didn't go down to the local art gallery and hang out with, with artists, because other artists, you're not going to, Dan is not going to ask me for, for a logo. He's going to do his own. So Dan went to where people can't, don't have that skill. So he's there, he's placed himself, he's, he's networked with those people. And so everyone <coughs> here at Hypopotamus has said, hey, you want to contact you know, someone who, when you're ready to, to you know, design the interface for your apps, you know, we already have somebody here. The guy hangs out here, he comes here, he knows everybody, here's his phone number. So you have to go to where your target market is, and not just, just random. You have to be smart about it. And even like when doing shows, your particular art may not fit a particular show. Going back to, to uh, her question, she wants to know where the buyers are. You know, um, if you paint sailboats, then the types of shows that Dan owns may not be your, the show for you. You need to go to boat shows, trade shows, anything where sailors are, boats are, uh, marine life, anyone who likes that type, type of stuff, that's where you need to be. Not in the urban art shows. So understand what you do, what you do well, and you know. And put yourself in that. Put yourself, put in, yourself in that, there. that circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. It's, We're gonna move on a little bit and uh, and take a look at the the handout I passed around. It uh, is called Top Five Marketing Keys to Social Media Promotions, and basically it's just an outline. Here, uh, John. This no, it's one other one. Um, and basically, it's an outline of some of the things that are that are out there for you that you can do. Um, and it starts off with branding. This is the whole thing that Flavor Day has been talking about. You have to establish your your presentation, your your look, your style. You know, and that's it right there. Yeah, yeah I got more, huh? And uh, and so it comes down to presentation, presentation, presentation. You know, you have to stay in message. You have to um, make it clear what it is that you do. And, uh, and get it out there. Um, second thing is website presentation. Not just online stuff, but your own personal website. And, uh, and you can read through it to uh, get an idea of uh, what I mean by these things. Uh, you also have email campaigns available to you. There's a lot of freebies online. Um, and you have to look, look for them. Um, there's uh, somebody, an artist, uh, Jason, uh, Justin Anderson, uh, told me that uh, uh, Facebook ads, and if uh, you have a, a, a certain account so, uh, with GoDaddy or Google stuff, you can um, also put in ads um, in the, in the um, depending what your budget is like. There's a lot of opportunities out there that you can do. The last thing I want to uh, that's on my list is that no matter what you do and what branding you use and what mar uh, social media you're at, you have to stay current. You don't want to tell people, yeah, I'm on Twitter, and then they go to your Twitter page, and the last time you posted was 2011. Yeah. What the, then you might as well not have one, because you're know, not saying anything. And um, so, so you have to stay current on it. And like I said, once a week, uh, every couple of weeks, just do it. But whatever it is, you have to uh, um, um, post something that's related to the business, related to your brand, related to marketing your service and your, uh, your art, your, your uh um, design work, whatever it is, um, do it, post it, uh, and always have a link. Have a link to where they can pay you. My websites, any of my, any of my websites you go to, there's a PayPal link. You don't have to have PayPal to pay me, but you, but it helps. And if you have a credit card or a debit card, you can still pay me with it. But basically, the point is that uh, I make it real easy for people to pay me for my services. You know, for so if you have artwork and you want to post your artwork on Instagram, tell them that you have a personal website where they can buy it. I uh, I went to a drawing session years ago. I go to drawing sessions all the time, but this one particular one I went to, I did I posted my drawings on Facebook the next day. Um, that night, the next day I got a message from a friend who said that they wanted one of those drawings to be their new new logo. So just off the bat, I got made two hundred fifty dollars on the logo. But I posted the artwork. I posted my skills. I keep posting, promoting, promoting, promoting. That's how it happens. Uh, I, I, like uh, Flavor Day said, I went out to uh, I go to a lot of tech industry uh, conferences, and that's how I met some of the cool people that are in here tonight. That's how I met the people who run this place. And I just go, and I'm the only artist there, the only designer there. There's nothing but hardcore nerds, and it's not a bad word. I'm not saying it to be mean. These are hardcore people who sit in front of the computer and now they know how to type symbols and things that mean stuff. 
and uh, and uh, and I'm the only one who don't know how to do that, but I'm an artist and I design. And I say, hey, I'm here. What's going on? And uh, do are any other artists there? No, I'm the only one. And so I end up working with different groups. And at the end of the conference, this two three days, and they call them hackathons and whatnot. Uh, everybody there, 200 people know my name. And so the next time they have a project that that they that needs a designer, they know I can do it. They know I'm hardcore with it. They give me a call. Go ahead. What, what you got? Square. Square. Yes. That's right. Definitely. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that. You got to make it real easy for people to pay you. That's yeah. right. You and, uh, and Square is another technology that's out there. If you have a smartphone, you don't need to pay credit card fees and have your uh, merchant, uh, account. Uh, merchant account and uh, have your uh, credit score uh, made available to credit card companies to process credit cards for you. You can just get Square. PayPal. It's, it's real free. easy. Square is free. You just sign up for an account. It's just like PayPal, except for they send you in the mail a little card reader. And you, wherever you are, if you're at, at trade shows, exhibitions, or anything, somebody wants to buy something and they don't have cash, whip that out. They can sign their name. You can send them an email receipt. Or, or if you're on a, on a computer hooked up to a, a, a printer, you can print them a receipt. But most people take an email receipt and everything, and it's free. You, know, the, the, you end up paying processing fees, but so you would do the same thing if you had a credit card machine. But those processing fees are much cheaper than if you were to get a merchant account. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's that's what technology has available for us right now. Um, going back to something I, I just remember, a lot of times, you know, I may post five or six, seven times a day. I'm never sitting in front of this laptop posting. I may be at a stoplight. Two minutes is, is quick enough for me to make a quick post and send it out to five different social media. Networks right out of, your, doc, out of your phone office for 20 minutes. I'm sitting there posting, posting then. So get those tunes and those apps on your on your smartphones. Most people have smartphones these days, and you know don't you, you don't have to be at home for two hours posting. You know anytime you get a quick minute, a minute and a half, five minutes post. And there's a there's an app in particular. Before I forget, um, I just found out about it, uh, a couple months ago. If you have um, particularly, I have an iPhone. And you have Facebook on your on your iPhone. Well, I have several pages um, that I, I post to, but on your iPhone, the only page that you, that you can post to is your personal page. Well, I found an app which pulls up all my pages, so I can post as the Art Star page or the Black Book um, pages or three of the other pages that I post. It, it's called Pages. It's called Pages. Yeah, it's made by Facebook. Facebook. Yeah? Because if you don't have that, yeah. anything that you post. From the regular Facebook app, you're posting as, as yourself. You, yourself, and you may not necessarily want to do that. You may want to post as your page. And you need the ability to do that. And there's an app out there for everything. Okay, we got a question or a comment. Say what? Well, Explain it. If you want to start a gallery, like what area would be the best for open gallery? Okay. So if you want to start a gallery, what? How do you know which area to start? Yeah, like, to start it up at? Yeah, so exactly. mm -hmm. Location, location, location. That's right. Location, location, location. Uh huh. Foot traffic. Foot traffic. Yep. Yeah. Or or a, a place uh, where there are um, um, other galleries in the okay. area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That way. Uh, that way you get uh, you get uh, people already who coming out looking for art, and they come uh, they may come across yours. We uh, participated in a couple of uh, art walks in Castleberry Hill area uh, late last year, and uh, during the art walk, you know, and, and uh, we weren't even in the official art walk literature or uh, schedule or anything, but we were there, and uh, we got plenty of people to come and take a look at our artwork, and some artists did sell artwork, yeah. I, I didn't you got to put any, yourself there. I didn't sell any artwork at that show, but I met one of my business clients, and that was last November. I'm still working working with this guy. So how did you put yourself in the art show? You were at the art show. You just kind of had something off on the side. Yeah, we found, uh, we found a person. Yeah, well, there was, uh, there was a person who, uh, who, who uh, had space, mm -hmm. and, they, and they wanted to take advantage of the art walk, and so they invited a bunch of artists to come and show oh. some work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 
Now, touching somebody's mailbox is actually a federal offense. You can attach it to the outside, I yeah, think. you can put it on the outside, mm -hmm. but you can't open it. You can it. also go to the door door and stick something on the door. And there's nothing but, illegal about that. But at, at the same time, the money that you would spend for, like, postcards or business cards, you don't know who these people are, so you may be wasting your money. You're just basically throwing them out in the air, and, you know, 10% of people who, who have your, your postcard or your business card who may get it, that 10% or maybe even less than that may be actual art buyers. And so that's where you, know, you need to concentrate your, your efforts into where you know people are going to buy your art or mm -hmm. people who like your type of art. Gotcha. Let me go over here and then over there. Uh, just a general question. If they were to give us five months to be on the website, obviously Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. If you go to the back page, uh, let's see, the back, is it the back, uh, the next to last page? Let me see, I had a list. There's a list here. Yep. Resources. And um, anybody who's watching this online, there, there's a, I will post a link for this too. Um, um, as an artist, you uh, want to, of course, Twitter and Facebook, um, uh, posters, Tumblr. Uh, Instagram is an app. Uh, of course, uh, YouTube. One that's not on there is, is Pinterest. A lot of artists. Oh, Pinterest, on. yeah. Pinterest. Pinterest. Uh, P I N T E R E S T dot com. Huh? And, and even though a lot of artists are going to Pinterest, a lot of artists don't know how you can post your, your price on your piece of. You just work. Just, yeah, just type in the dollar sign. As soon as you hit the dollar sign on your image, there's a, there's a tag across your, your image with whatever price you want to put it in. Mm. And, but at the same time, don't forget to put the name, title, link to where they can purchase. Mm -hmm. And preferably a link to your, your, your website or wherever you sell your, your work. Somebody got their hand up, and uh, but he, he was next. Did you want to say something? Well, see, it's, it's good that you recognize that, and now you know, and see, and what you were saying makes more sense now, you know, but you need to actually go to those, you know, where those older